Critical Making – die Politik von Hacking Dieses Video beginnt damit, zu erklären, dass sich die Außenwahrnehmung von Hackern ganz besonders mit der Obama-Legislaturperiode relativ stark geändert hat. Seit einiger Zeit werden Hacker nicht unbedingt am Rande der Gesellschaft wahrgenommen, sondern auch als angehende Unternehmerinnen und Unternehmer betrachtet. Und das Potenzial ist immens und wird deshalb sowohl von Wirtschaft als auch Politik erkannt und auch gefördert. Dadurch kommt es auch mehr zu einer Anteilnahme an der Entwicklung von Technologie durch die ganze Öffentlichkeit und im Idealfall zu einem demokratisierenden Effekt. Hier gibt es auch eine klare Querverbindung zu Christopher Fraunberger, der auch von der Demokratisierung der Technologieentwicklung spricht. Hat sich Ihr eigenes Bild von Hackern durch diese Lektion vielleicht schon ein wenig verändert? Why are people excited about hacker and maker spaces? Why are they relevant to broader society? I can start by telling you why I got interested in these spaces, in this research that was carried out in the early 2010s. When I first heard about these spaces, I was astonished at how uh, open and accessible they were, that they hosted new and emerging science and technology, whether that's DIY bio or 3D printers, and they allowed everybody to access these technologies. As someone who works on the relationship between science and society and who studies science communication, so much of my focus in my research is on processes where scientists or other kinds of elite groups try to get lay people, non-scientists, involved in technology or in the development of science. Here in Hacker and Maker Spaces, this was happening by itself. People were coming together based on their own interests and enthusiasm to form Hacker and Maker Spaces and work with science and technology. Projects like crowdsourced antibiotics or giving access to cutting edge manufacturing tools This seemed to me an opportunity or a process where science and technology were being democratized, open up to wider publics. It seemed to me also a different way of doing science and technology that could teach us lessons. Rather than science being focused only in institutions like universities or businesses, this was a model where science and technology were accessible to all kinds of people, whatever their educational or other background. My excitement then came from this notion of democratization. Other people, however, were interested not only because of this, but for other reasons as well. Hacker and maker spaces, uh, as they started to emerge in the maker movement in the 2000s, they also became tied to the possibility of new forms of innovation perhaps even a new industrial revolution, and the development of uh, entrepreneurship and new business. So for instance, the Obama administration in the US, they were very excited about the maker movement. They supported it. They funded and organized a national maker week, uh, for instance, uh, and they spoke about the maker movement, not only as about democratization, but as supporting entrepreneurship. So here's a quote from the Obama White House when they were talking about their support for hackers and makers. This is from a press release. In recent years, the rise of the maker movement and growing community of self-identified makers have come to represent a huge opportunity for the United States. In the same way that the internet and cloud computing have lowered the barriers to entry for digital startups, the democratization of the tools needed to design and prototype physical products can support entrepreneurship and a renaissance of American manufacturing. Democratization is there, you can hear, um, but they are concerned with ultimately the way in which making might lead to a resurgence in American manufacturing and economic growth associated with that. So this is one other way that uh, people became excited uh, and cared about hacking and making. 
A third way is perhaps similar to my enthusiasm for democratization. Discussion of hacking and making in terms of critical making sees these practices as a form of intervention into wider society. So this kind of comment on hacking and making often comes from scholars who are interested in how we live together as societies and how things can be otherwise. One study, for instance, of electronic waste hacking sees these practices as a way of testing out and developing other ways of living in the world than those that are generally handed down by the structures that we live in. In this sense, hacking and repairing and making are not just things that we do in and of themselves, but a form of political action. Similarly, some scholars have talked about hacking and making as design rhetoric. So ways of designing with technology that can be used to speculate and experiment with science and technology, but with also other ways of living together in community. If we come together as citizens and think about our futures, what do we want them to look like? How might we develop technologies that could help us to do this? The technologies that come out of these practices of critical and experimental making are not necessarily developed for uh, huge markets or for scaling up. Uh, or for selling um, to big audiences. Rather, they are exactly experiments that are meant to provoke our thinking. In this way, we can also think about making as a kind of education for citizenship by intervening in the world through making, repairing, developing technologies that suit us. We can think about how we want to live as individuals and communities. In this way, much of this discussion around critical making and hacking as intervention relates again to the idea of democracy and of empowerment. Perhaps this movement is exciting because it teaches us how to democratize tools and technology, how to empower ourselves as citizens to engage with them. So in one reflection on the maker movement, uh, Baba writes that making connotes a wide set of practices that ultimately aim to give control over socio-technical systems to a broader group of people, effectively democratizing the tools and knowledge of technical production. Hacking and making therefore holds great promise. Um, it allows us to think about our societies and the roles of technology within it. It allows us to follow our passions and to empower ourselves. At the same time, if we are thinking about this broader context of hacking and making and the maker movement, it's important to note that hacking and making is not always living up to these promises. Studies of hacking and making, my own included, do show that in practice, they are not quite so emancipatory and transformative activities as they might be. One example is that hacker and maker spaces, the spaces that I was visiting uh, around the US um, when I carried out this research, have often been criticized for being exclusionary and unwelcoming. While in theory, they are open to anybody who's interested in getting their hands on tools and technologies. In practice, many people, for instance, women or people of color, find that they feel left out or patronized uh, or not even allowed into what can seem like a very closed and cliquey space. Hacker and maker spaces then, at least in the past, have been critiqued for reproducing gendered and racialized assumptions about who is a hacker and who can become a hacker. In the same way, uh, other people have argued that hacking and making have become commodified and are tied to neoliberal imaginations and practices. Rather than these being these ways in which uh, lay people can seize back control from institutions and structures, um, they become all too often entangled with big business 
or traditional institutions. They may even exploit the volunteer labor that goes on within hacker and maker spaces. We need to take these criticisms seriously. Uh, there have been problems with the way in which hacking and making has been rolled out and articulated in the world. At the same time, they don't negate the potential of hacking. In the final video, I want to consider in more detail what we as people interested in digital transformation can learn from this movement.